there are two very important theorems one is squish theorem and another is contraction theorem regarding sequence of numbers xn and these are two very important theorems it is very apparent from the <coughs> term that if we have three sequences xn yn and zn okay such that xn is less than yn is less than zn for all n then whenever xn converges to l and zn converges to the same limit l yn will also will always converge to the same limit l whenever these two converges we must have the middle sequence convergent to the same point and similarly whenever these two are divergent and this inequality persist that all xn and zn is such that xn less than yn less than zn and if xn and zn diverges then yn will diverge similarly about this contraction theorem we prefer to write that if for a sequence xn we have three terms xn xn plus 1 and xn plus 2 such that xn plus 2 minus xn plus 1 is equal to k into xn plus 1 minus xn where this k is a number proper fraction which is strictly greater than 0 and strictly less than 1 that means this is a proper fraction then this sequence is contracted sequence and it will be always convergent okay so this is the contraction theorem whenever we have xn plus 2 minus xn plus 1 is equal to a proper fraction multiplied with xn plus 1 minus xn we must have that sequence to be a contracted sequence which is always convergent okay now let us say a few words about the <coughs> this is the concept of contracted sequence which is also a cauchy sequence anyway i am not going into the details of that you can easily <coughs> find it yourself i would like to say a word about the if x n and y n are both convergent to two different limit points say x and y simple then we can easily establish that the sequence x and y n converges to x y how just see we know that xn minus x is less than epsilon and yn minus y less than epsilon we prefer to take it like this we may take it like this also remember that for all n greater than capital n we have this and this 
whenever x n and y n converges to x and y by definition respectively now what about x n y n minus x y we can always write it as x n y n minus x y n plus x y n minus x y which can always be written as less than strictly less than okay now remember that since they both of them are convergent so they must be bounded this is very crucial and since both of them are bounded we can replace this as m into epsilon 1 which is the bound of y n plus x as a x is a finite quantity this into epsilon 2 and we can easily conceive this to be another arbitrary small number isn't it so because epsilon 1 may be written as this and epsilon 2 may be written as this so this cancels out and we have you know, put a 2 here since epsilon is arbitrary small so we can choose this epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 that is why this arbitrary small definition is very important and this is a very crucial proof and you can extend it to show that whenever you have a sequence x n y n sorry whenever you have two sequence x n and y n their ratio proportion is also convergent to the ratio of these two limits whenever you have x n by y n this converges to x by y provided we have no y n to be 0 and no y limit is non zero limit this is obviously a prerequisite and you can easily establish this and this may be applied to find that whenever we have two function whose limit exists their product and ratio are also the product of the separate limits we have f and g and limit of fx as x tends to a is l while limit of gx as x tends to a is l prime so limit of fx into gx as x tends to a will be l into l prime because sequence defines limit we have learnt it.